love this stuff. It's a jazzy Monday. There you go. <laughs> Take out all the props. Yeah. Something from the Dave Brubeck band. Just in case you're wondering who that is. I bet a lot of you probably think, hey, como chingas sabe James de toda esta pinche música? Cállate la boca, shut up. <laughs> I know my music. And if you don't believe me, just ask Rally. Oh, yeah. <laughs> She knows all types of stuff. It's pretty crazy. <laughs> You're like the savant of music. I guess so. <laughs> you really are. They call it um, being a musicologist. Mm -hmm. There you go. Oil pitito. Oh, chingas. Yeah. All right. It's hashtag PVT Saturday Night Party Live, a special Monday edition. And it's coming from the My PVT Network Studios, brought to you by Dr. T's Primary Care for Men. If you need to boost that immune system, you need to get a hold of them because they've got what it takes. Try the IV Vitamin Infusion Therapy. I got it. And when I say it slow, I say it right. <laughs> <laughs> That's perfect. Yeah, they'll put a little uh, needle in that vein and then they'll throw in all those vitamins you need to boost your immune system and we were just talking about it me and my wife i've been with them for i don't know how many years and i i can't even remember the last time i had a cold or the flu uh but they've got testosterone if you're a little older and you need to boost that uh you know strength and and fat burning and muscle building and you're trying to get into the gym you know because something that we learned with this covid is that it's very 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 important to stay in shape and, and be healthy just in case anything like this ever happens again mm -hmm. and also it's brought to you by the law office of Rene A. Flores thank you so much Rene if you have any issues with DWI if you need a defense lawyer he's a man to take and to get and call him up hashtag DWI expert is his uh moniker on social media all you have to do is search that and you'll find all his stuff and get an information to give him a call and we'll give you some more information later on throughout the show this re this reminds me of christmas music yeah yeah I, I love it this reminds me of being in the bar you know with a martini and wearing my tuxedo you wearing your ballroom dress <laughs> and your red bottoms. Yeah. Yeah. So uh, we got some shout outs. George Quintanilla, shout out. Juan Regalado. Big D, Brian, Anthony Gonzalez from Flint, Michigan. Uh, Oscar Cantu. La Minina Nena KYC. Hello. Hello. Samuel Martinez. Jose Reynoso. Hello, Kitty. Anthony Garcia. Pasiwate. He's a new one, right? Or yeah, she's I know. A, I don't know if it's a he yeah, or a she. That's, <laughs> it's Pas a mystery. It's a mystery. <laughs> yeah. That's what my wife says when I'm trying to be real flirtatious with her and she's not feeling like it. Pasiwate. <laughs> Pasiwate. <laughs> All right. So, ladies and gentlemen, the reason we're doing this uh, Monday night show is because Saturday night we had a show. And uh, we started the show. We we're about to start it. And the lights went out because Hurricane Hannah hit South Texas and uh, caused quite some damage. Lots of rain. It came in probably about uh, Saturday afternoon, I'd say five or six in the afternoon in our area in McAllen. And um, it was uh, it was pretty interesting. Uh, we were we had light everything was fine and i said perfect we're gonna do the show and the hurricane's going on and we're still gonna be able to do it we've got electricity we've got and right when we're gonna get on uh, like at nine o'clock it was 10 minutes before nine as soon as we walked into the studio bam mm -hmm. the light was gone yep. 
So I had told Rally, you know what? Let's put some candles just in case the light goes off during the show. Uh, which I don't know what we would have done because some of this stuff is uh, electrical, like the roadcaster, you know. But our devices aren't. Anyway, so we were going to put some candles just in case and light them up in case we get into the dark. And, uh, well, we ended up starting it with the candles. And uh, what is seven, like, like seven or eight minutes? Yeah, and, it's a little under eight minutes. Yeah. And all of a sudden, we just lost feed. I mean, we tried to do our best, but uh, we had uh, quite an interesting evening. <laughs> the light went out. So we had no a- AC. We had no television. We had no way of charging our devices. Um, we had uh, we had absolutely nothing. And, and like when we were struggling without an AC for about a week, we were capable of plugging in a fan. We were capable of plugging in that AC unit, that portable AC unit that I put in the bedroom. So we were we were able to survive. But man, I don't know how <laughs> people used to do it without AC back in the day. I you know, know, my grandma. And our, our grandparents, I mean, mm-hmm. they didn't have central air and heat till about the mid-80s, maybe, if they were lucky. And you know what? I don't remember it being this hot and humid, though. Mm-hmm. I just don't remember, I guess, because, you know, you're young. You're, you just kind of, it's not a big deal, you know? But I don't remember it being this hot and humid and muggy and sticky and, ugh, gross. Yeah. Well, you know, uh, when we didn't have the AC unit, it was hot around the house. Mm-hmm. And we were able and capable to, you know we were able to deal with it Mm -hmm. but uh, this this hurricane we had no electricity at all and it was just very humid after the hurricane because during the hurricane pues it was okay abrimos unas cuantas ventanitas y entraba el aire por uno y salía por el otro so it would circulate through the house and it was a bit fresh Mm -hmm. but at the end of the hurricane on sunday evening about six o'clock we were in bed still laying down and what else could we do (laughs) <laughs> and um, so I slept quite a lot, quite a bit. I caught up on some sleep. But all of a sudden, my whole body felt sticky. And I said, oh, man, now. Yes. <laughs> ahora si va a pegar este yes, pedo. Was bad. Was and bad. Uh, I'd have to say that, Rally, you were very annoyed. Sweetie. I was. I think I was. I was. <laughs> I was worried about the dogs. I was worried about all the groceries that we had just purchased. Uh-huh. So that was kind of pissing me off. And then you have no control Like I was just on an automated service call three, four times. And I'm like, I need to speak to a human being who actually (laughs) talks to me. I I don't want an automated, you know, voice robot. No, I want someone to talk to me. So (laughs) I do want to send a special shout out to all the linemen out there, all of the crews working to restore our electricity and light and all of that. You guys are awesome. And let me tell you, there's still some people out there with no light, ladies and gentlemen, and no electricity. Uh, there's some people out in the, in the rural areas, you know, by Alton and my old 12 here. And even Willacy County, I saw some pictures. Yeah, so there's still a lot of people without electricity. And I'm in my heart, our heart goes out to them. Yes. Because, you know, yesterday, and we were already thinking, I mean, what are we going to do with all the food in the refrigerator? You know, because we had some, I had just bought two gallons of ice cream. I know, my favorite and ice cream. Yeah. Like, can't go to waste. And so we're like, <laughs> yeah, I got your Texas Starry Night, you know, Hill Country Fair. That's one mm-hmm. of the best, you know. And then I got meat, peaches, and cream, baby, because I love peaches and cream, you know. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, so I was like, man, so I said, milkshake, is it fell? But the frozen foods, like the the meats, were so solidly frozen that it kept it I like know, a like cold, goodness. like an ice chest. So it was okay. And but I think another day, like tonight, we would have had some spoiled yeah. food. I mean, it would have mm-hmm. been bad. So our heart goes out to all the people out there. But let me tell you, these uh, linemen over here, AEP, uh, we know some personally. Mm-hmm. They're working, and and in the city was working 30-hour shifts cleaning up the place the next day. Mm-hmm. I personally, ladies and gentlemen, um, it was like 2 in the morning, Saturday night, Sunday morning, right? Yes. And, we, I, you know, I got up and looked out the window, and I saw my, I saw waves of water on the street. And I'm like, ya estás viendo un canal, bro. And we have three drains. We used to have one drain, and it's right by our mailbox in the house here, by the street. So they did some road construction and they made two other drains on the opposite corner and, on, and across the street. And I was like, great. You know, if it rains, the, the water will go fast and it will recede fast. 
And I thought to myself, there's probably something stuck in the drain because that's happened before. Sometimes a trash can floats down from down the street or, you know, any some type of debris. So I, you own chanclas, you own a pinche, you know, swimming trunks, you own a muscle shirt. Me salí pa' fuera in el hurricane and the wind and the water was cold. It was windy. And I get there and I see like where the, the manhole is right on the side of the yard there. Mm -hmm. And there's like, you know, almost like a foot of water. So I walk in there with my chanclas in there and I see, you know, uh, branches sticking out. And I start pulling out the branches, start throwing them out. Of, and there was like a little, little remolino of water, right, mm -hmm. when it was uh, going. But as soon as I was pulling out the branches, it started getting bigger. And I was like, andale, because the water was starting to come up to the driveway. And I was like, a la madre. Yeah, it was scary. And then I was looking across the street. And there was some stuff that I could see in those drains. And I'm like, man, there's no way I can go across, man. It's, it's, you know. And so then I came in. And then the next morning I got up. And the neighbors were out there trying to pull stuff out and cleaning out the drains as well. And it wasn't flooded. And I told them, man, I was out in a, 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 last night at 2 in the morning I was out here. And uh, the neighbor said, well, yeah, man, we we're coming out here. And we we're just worried that there weren't any power lines in the water. And I was like, fíjate. Yo me metí a la pinche agua sin saber si había un power line mejor a una buena tostada y no. But uh, fortunately, fuera fuera llegado la dentro de la casa con un afro, el pelo todo hecho frito, no. Oh my goodness. But uh, man, it's it's pretty crazy, you know. Este and so the next day, you know, we we said, you know what, let's go get some food. So we got in the car. <laughs> <laughs> and as soon as we got in the truck, you know, because I have a four-wheel drive truck uh, lifted. So I said, no pedo que se venga la I mean, we can go through the roads. We went to Taco Palenque. And uh, llegamos ahí y estaba la línea raza. I mean, it was long. I mean, and, and then after we got there, it got longer. And by the time we left, there was people on the side of the street in line. And across the street, Tal Pato. También. Yeah, it was crazy. It had a line. And then we saw Sonic next to that place, and every freaking mm -hmm. parking space was taken. Yep. So there were people out and about getting some food. So it boosted the economy for yes, those restaurants, that's, that's obviously. Mm -hmm. So, you know, and then we brought the food back, and, uh, you know, este. Yo sé, un little candlelight dinner con la quesadilla de doble pollo, papá. Y también este, un poquito de tacos matamoros. And uh, you like the taco. What is your taco, baby? Uh, taco casero. Uh, casero. Is my favorite. Sí, tiene with fideo. And I love putting yeah. lemon on it and all of that. So we just picked out. I mean, it was yeah. like, it was a buffet of yeah. taco palenque. <laughs> <laughs> Now, on the way back from uh, taco know. palenque, you know, we drove around the neighborhoods to check out some of the damage done. And, uh, man, we took a lot of video of stuff. As you can see, uh, we drove around and, uh, and went through some neighborhoods. There were some, uh, you know, brush all over the place. Mm -hmm. A lot of trees had been damaged. And, uh, you know, what's interesting is that in the area that we live in, there are some huge trees. I mean, this, this neighborhood around here has been around for a while. I mean, it's like from the 70s. And a lot of the homes here are old, classic style. You know, nowadays, muchas de las casas se parecen iguales. You know, they all got the same, you know, format, the same, uh, you know, uh, the same four floor plan, all that. Back in the day, every house looked different. Every house had its own personality. And you see the trees and you see all that. And, and, and the thing about it, the trees are like... The power lines are intertwined between the yes, trees that and stuff. This big tree right now that we're looking at mm -hmm. is, I mean, it was the biggest tree that we saw, you know, that was, and you could see the power lines in between. It was very scary. Mm -hmm. It was extremely scary. Yeah. So there, there was definitely some damage uh, going on here in our area. We can just mm -hmm. imagine some of the other areas that were harder hit. We actually called uh, Rally's mom. And it was about, man, I guess uh, about 9, 10 p.m., 11 p.m. at night on Saturday. Yeah. And mm -hmm. she was like, no, ya se paró la wind, ya se paró, aquí no hay wind. She lives in North Edinburgh. Mm -hmm. And we looked at our radar, and she was right in the middle of the eye of the hurricane. Yeah, yeah. And the uh, the eye of the hurricane <laughs> is like the calmest area of the hurricane. Yes, she, she, she was so, like, happy that everything calmed down. And I was like, but, Mom, you're in the eye. Yeah. <laughs> She's like, what? <laughs> yeah, and, and uh, so... 
you know, we're just hoping uh, we haven't heard of anybody that got hurt mm -hmm. or that, uh, you know, was killed during this uh, storm. So that's mm -hmm. good. It was a it was a uh, what is it? A, a one? It was I think a category it was a category one. one. Yeah. Yes. So it wasn't too bad. So, but uh, that's what happened here, ladies and gentlemen. And <laughs> so we didn't get to do the show. So that's why we're doing it tonight. And I hope you all, uh, you know, um, you know, kind of appreciate that by hitting like, yes, uh, subscribing if you haven't subscribed, mm -hmm. and of course share the feed, share the uh, the link with your friends on social media, and if you want to join our Patreon club, we have a twenty five dollar pledge that gets you a special hashtag PVT T shirt and sticker and you have a chance of winning in our pvt weekly drawing for prizes uh you can just uh, log on to rock and roll james pvt and uh, we have some membership levels you know we have uh you don't necessarily have to give 25 dollars. whatever you pledge in those tiers we'll still send you something because we appreciate your support mm -hmm. we really do and that's why we work so hard to put this show together yes. we want to thank, wanna thank so um our new patreon club members mm -hmm. uh vanessa Tre uh, Vanessa Trevino from Brownsville, Texas, who uh, mm -hmm. I think is the daughter of a good friend of mine, Rufus, mm -hmm. who uh, used to be the roadie for Maz back in the 80s and for the force. I, guess they all told me, and I remember him back in the day, man. He was always there. He was one of the number one roadies, dude, uh, back in the nightclubs when they used to play at the clubs. Also, Mark Anthony from Bastrop, Texas. Who's and, also uh, on our chat box right now. So thank you, uh, Mark Anthony, for there. chatting with us. Thank you, Mark. <laughs> uh, Jean Benavides, Twin Falls, Idaho, as well. Mm -hmm. uh, thank you so much for being part of the Patreon Club. Yes. Also, we want to thank Junior Salinas of Mission, oh Texas. Hold on, hold on. Okay. There you go. There uh, you go. Sorry. <laughs> Junior Salinas from Mission, Texas, uh, who probably uh, uh, was part of the, the hurricane this weekend as well. I don't even know if they've got uh, light over there yet. Uh, Felipe Menchaca, Round Rock, Texas, and Emilio Garcia Jr., formerly from uh, Mercedes, now living in uh, Arizona. He's an educator, mm -hmm. and his uh, brother, Eloy Garcia, called me on uh, the Throwback Thursday mix, I think, last Thursday. And, uh, man, we go back a long time. They used to own a little mom-and-pop store on the corner of Washington and 10th Street in Mercedes where everybody would go. You'd get all the little toys there, all the, I mean, all the little candies, uh, you'd get uh, Vindiana, uh, the kites, and uh, during Halloween, they'd have those wax uh, uh, accordions with juice in them. And I re remember that that candy, that it wasn't even candy. It was like little <laughs> like little uh, rubber stuff that you'd put at the end of a little straw, and you'd blow it, and it would make oh, like yeah. a swirly colored balloon. Yes, I yeah. mean, talk I don't know. <laughs> it smelled real bad. It smelled <laughs> extremely <laughs> Chemically, Ta talk I about mean, toxicity, man. No, I mean that that can kill coronavirus, man. Yeah. I mean, we grew up with that shit, you know. <laughs> oh my goodness! So thank you guys so much to our new Patreon yeah. members. We appreciate your support and everything that we do. Thank you guys. Also, uh, Cash App. We have Dollar Sign Rock and Roll James. Uh, we want to thank Gilbert Zamora for his twenty dollar uh, donation to Cash App, and Aracelia Carrillo from uh, she, she's uh, Juan Carrillo's. Jose. Jose Carrillo's uh, sister or wife. 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 wife? Okay. Yes. Thank you guys uh, so much. So they each gave 25 bucks to the show, and we appreciate mm -hmm. that, man. Yes. Florida. There are P1, show, uh, P1 viewers. Yes. Thank uh, you. Which means they're always watching and they're always yeah, supporting. Yeah, I know. <laughs> uh, Venmo, we have at Rock and Roll James. And like I said, I just found out I can actually respond to you guys on Venmo. So I'm able to do that. And I just started uh, just, uh, responding. So I hope you don't mind. It's kind of like a, a month late, but uh, <laughs> you know, better late than never. Right? Right? So yes, at one yes, time. yes, yes, yes. And uh, the good thing about having a phone now is that fans can text pics to us. And, uh, <laughs> and they send us pictures with like their hashtag PVT stuff on, yes, you know. it's awesome. It's awesome. It's the hashtag PVT fan picks. Now, Al from Austin, mm -hmm. is the, he won uh, when we were at the island. Yes. So we gave him a South Padre Island t-shirt. We went shopping for him mm -hmm. and a bunch, about three other contestants. 
So, and I'm tempted to say he's at the island on this picture. It looks awesome. It looks amazing. So yeah. Thank and, you, Al, for sharing. And then we had Simon Godina from uh, Delavon, Wisconsin, mm -hmm. which I think uh, he uh, he got on our phone line as well. He said it was like 75 degrees over there. Man, yes. I wish it was that that was the case yesterday. Yeah. So there. he's sporting his hashtag PBT uh, Patreon Club member T-shirt, and uh -huh. then he also has a whiskey D. Um, Texas School t-shirt. So wow. thank you. That's thank awesome. you so much. And also Gilbert uh, Garcia, Gilberto Garcia's grandson. This is such a cute picture. <laughs> yeah. He's a little kid. He's like, he's oh, watching okay. hashtag PBT because now you can watch YouTube on the big screen TV. Yeah. So yes. he can actually... That's watch cute. it on tv and that's that what his is babies cute. yeah, yeah that the is just, grandson that is awesome yeah that's awesome man. <laughs> oh that's my great goodness. so i mean that this is something that's awesome and uh you know and we want to thank you all for participating in our show and whenever we can we're going to recognize all of you yes. that help us out and that support the show because this is something we do and this is a passion for us and we started, uh, you know, kind of like small. It was just me doing a little thing and just being kind of like uh, experimental. But then it's just grown. My wife is part of it now. So let me enter my daughter as well, who can't be with us because there's shelter in place still going on till Monday. So she'll probably be here with us next Tuesday. But right now, I've got my number one producer for the uh, rally. Ah! <laughs> <laughs> oh but my goodness! I'm That's okay. I, it's and I'm thinking of Felicia right now. I know, I know, because you're like, okay, we have to call it. Yeah. Hi everyone! Thank you guys so much for um, watching. Don't forget to hit the like button. And those of you guys that are, that do have a Gmail account, go ahead and chat with the rest of our um, my PBT network family. So thank you guys so much for joining us. Yeah, we sure do appreciate everything. Mm -hmm. So, uh, what was your uh, take on the experience we had this weekend, babe? Oh my goodness. I, it was, oh my goodness, it was extremely stressful. Um, the heat was unbearable. At first it was okay, like you were saying. Um, it was, it was bearable. But I think because we had the AC on, you know, the day of, we had it really low. So it stayed extremely cool in here. Mm -hmm. But the next day I was like, I was very desesperada. I couldn't, the dogs were just like back and forth. Um, and, and in back of my mind, I'm like, we're going to waste all this food um you know if the lights don't come back on but it was okay it was okay i mean we had food as long as i'm fed i'm fine <laughs> so it was okay yeah it was okay we survived but it was it was funny seeing you so annoyed yeah i have I to say annoyed. that yeah i was very annoyed because <laughs> I, I, I was annoyed. laughing I, it, not only that she I mean, didn't the like dogs, it not only that the dogs have to go out do their business outside and mm. then come back in you know i mean i'm not gonna keep that from them so i would you know i had to take them out let them do their business and well they would come inside the house and i'd have to wipe their paws willie he's a weenie dog so his whole underside his <laughs> belly was full of mud so i had to bathe them um but yeah i was i was more annoyed that i had just clean the house thoroughly and it was a mess but it's okay i cleaned again today yeah <laughs> we're fine yeah. we're okay i just want to thank you because you you really keep this place together i right, thank you papa you do thank you hey by the way uh we've got an awesome contest happening starting august 3rd mm -hmm. uh jaime dianda is going to give away one of his prized accordions mm -hmm. and it's going to be autographed and uh, let's get to some information on that right now. Check this out. Soy como el pájaro negro. Big Johnson 77 Music and my PBT Network present the Jaime Dianda Accordion Giveaway. Tickets will go on sale beginning August 3rd, 2020. Only 200 tickets will be available and you get to pick your number. Raffle ticket buyers will receive a text to their cell phone guaranteeing the number that they picked. The winner will be randomly chosen and announced live on the MyPBT Network YouTube channel. There is no limit on how many numbers you can buy. The Jaime Dianda Accordion Giveaway. For all info and other questions, contact Julian Johnson at julianbigj at yahoo.com or follow Jaime Dianda on social media at facebook.com slash Jaime Dianda 1979 or Instagram at Jaime underscore Dianda 79. Own Jaime Dianda's personal accordion. The Jaime Dianda Accordion Giveaway.
Awesome. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's going to be awesome. And uh, we just can't wait for that. And Jaime de Ando will be giving away the accordion right here live on hashtag PVT inside the My PVT Networks. And, and, and let me tell you, he could have gone anywhere with this contest. Mm -hmm. He could have gone to any corporate radio station, corporate uh, television station, corporate media. He came with us, you know, independent creators. And that is something that I was just I was just totally blown away when they asked yeah. me to be part of it. Mm -hmm. And I was like, hell yeah, hi, man, man, let's do it. And so right away I created the, 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 pro, the promotional co commercial and started working on the promotion to help him out and it's going to be something that's going to be really awesome, and uh, and I hope you're a part of it. So, yes. do we have any uh, any comments? Any? Um, we do, but can yeah, because you're a little bit Noe closer Garza, to the big screen. Yeah, <laughs> uh, Pat Ortiz, uh, Rally. How did you get your name? Ooh. Okay, I want to know. Oh, okay. So, do you want me to explain? <laughs> well, that's what uh, Pat Ortiz <laughs> is asking. Okay, well. My real name is not Rally. That's my childhood name that just kind of stuck, and now everyone... It's a nickname. Yeah, my nickname. Um, and so my family, of course, and my closest friends um, call me Rally, but my real name is Aurelia. And so I was named after my great-grandmother, and um, which is, you know, on my dad's side. And so when my mom had me in her big belly... My grand, my great grandmother had, um, they had, you know, they had told her that she was legally blind, and that, you know, she well, obviously she wasn't going to be able to 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 see anymore. So my 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 dad and my mom kind of talked to her. They were talking to her, and so she told my parents, you know, it, since I'm not going to be able to see her, um, you know, could you all name her after me? And so it worked out perfect because all my other sisters, um, their names start with an A. My oldest sister, Adriana, and my middle sister, Araselia. Um, so it just worked out. So they named me after my my great-grandmother. Your Adriana. brother's the only one that's out there with an yeah, O. Yeah, my, well, because he's a boy. So, Orlando. Yeah, he's, uh, he's, OJ. He's, yeah, OJ. <laughs> so, yeah, so it's just a nickname that um, I don't know where my parents got Rally from, though. I, I don't, I really have no idea. My sister, Sally, her real name's Araselia. Mm -hmm. So we call her Sally, and my sister, Adriana, um, we call her Nani. Maybe when they were trying to get you to say your own name, you, you kept saying that. Maybe. I mean, that could have been. Or maybe, uh, you know, they like going to that little burger joint called Rallies, you know. Oh, right. I mean? yeah. Rallies and Checkers. Yeah. Which, by the way, I have a cousin named Checkers, too. So it's kind of, oh, that's another thing. That's list, true, right? right? <laughs> yeah. Saludos pa' Checkers. My cousin Checkers. Toda la yes. familia Hernandez. Yes, all of my, all of my family. Yeah. Yeah, that's where my name comes from. All right. Well, <laughs> we're going to do the recap of the week. That's what we're going to do on Saturdays, ladies and gentlemen. Mm -hmm. So, uh you know, something that happened this past Thursday, you know, because we really enjoyed doing the show on Thursday with uh, Car uh, Ch uh, Charlie Corona, Carlos, verdad? Mm -hmm. It's the Chaz. We call Chaz. him Chaz. It's a rock and Chaz show. And he has, you know, his um, uh, his collectible. Uh, we do uh, the rock and pole. We do the random album. We do a uh, celebrity birthdays. We do man. It's it's just a lot of fun. It's very informative, and we get mm -hmm. to talk a lot about a lot of cool stuff, right? But well, I'm I tend to put music in the background, right? Yeah. And sometimes I'm kind of worried because we did a show and I played the Fleetwood Mac Dreams song because it was I think Stevie Nicks' birthday or something. So I put mm -hmm. the song and. When after we were done, we couldn't watch the show because it got blocked. Yes. Ugh. You know, so the show gets totally blocked. The The good thing about it is that we keep a copy of the entire program on our switcher uh, studio. Yeah. And so we're able to, you know, do episodes with it or maybe cut out the part with a song and upload it all together without that. So we do have we do have an image. I did put it. Uh, I put a little image together where you you cut up the mm -hmm. that show the rock and chat show into little um episodes so we have them there and you can see them on the screen right now yeah and that's what we get you know when when you try to see the video mm -hmm. and so we get really bummed out with that and it happened again this past thursday and it was with acdc you know we were yes. playing some acdc music and uh, the question was what well, would you if you only had 
the money to buy one CD, which one would it be? Guns N' Roses, Appetite for Destruction, ACDC, Back in Black, or uh, what was the third one? Um, it was... Uh, Guns N' Roses? Well, it was Guns N' Roses. Oh, Metallica. Metallica, yeah, Kill Them All. <laughs> yeah. So uh, we played a little ACDC and boom. And I was kind of worried about it because what usually this is what I've learned, folks. When you play American artists, you probably tend to just get a, you know, a copy, uh, a notification. You don't get a copyright strike. You get a notification telling you, you know what, you're using somebody else's music. Uh, what we're going to do, this is not a strike. Uh, they're going to be getting the royalties from any streams you get. And I said, that's fine. I don't care. I'm not here to make money off the video. I'm here to, you know, entertain everybody and play them, be able to play the music. I'm fine with it. But it seems to be when I use any type of uh, artist from across the pond, you know, England, they end up blocking it over here. Yes. Uh, and so the first time it happened was with uh, Eric Burden and the Animals with my dad's 75th uh, uh, birthday uh, par uh, party that we did. You want, it, how, how does the song go? It was uh, House of the Rising Sun. Oh, House of the Rising Sun. So, man, it got, it got deleted, you know, and I was mm -hmm. kind of bummed out about that because it was some really cool memories there. And then uh, Fleetwood Mac, they're originally from the UK, and they came over here and they met up with, uh, you know, uh, what's her name uh stevie nicks and her husband and they were americans but the band was from the uk acdc australia uk so i've learned my lesson i'm gonna be very careful uh with uh, what music i played during the program but that's the reason that the show got blocked so but we still were able and the thing about it is i had to cut out the whole chaz um the whole Chaz collectible because that's when the ACDC music was playing. So I was like, Gene Gown, he pulled out a samurai sword and yes. he brought out some mustard, uh, some mustard yeah, sauce. from it some awesome. from some movie star. And <laughs> yeah, so it was like really awesome. And I was like, Gene Gown. So what I did is I pulled, I, I cut it out and I put some other music that's a little uh, louder than the ACDC, and it kind of so the algorithms on YouTube can't catch it. I know. So I was able to <laughs> re-put it up. So if you want to see it, you could just check out our videos and our playlists, and you can find it and just uh, check out uh, the Rock and Chaz Collectible, Rock and Chaz Show with Chaz's mm -hmm. Collectible, all right? Yes. So there you have it. Ooh. A little drum solo. Puro jazz. So right now we're going to talk about uh, some sports and uh, I'm going to call my son because he is pretty much the sports guru right. around here. <laughs> he and uh, and he's he's got a good take. He keeps up with that stuff more than I do because I, I keep up with politics, you know. Mm -hmm. And so we'll see. Uh, what, I'm going to talk to him. Hello. What's up, Ronnie? How you doing? Hello, hello. Hey, what's up, there? You're live on hashtag PVT, uh, Saturday night live party or Saturday night party live. But we're doing uh, it's a special Monday edition. You might want to lower that YouTube because then you're going to yeah, get Yeah, yeah, I just, I just did it right now. Yeah, there's a delay going on, man. So. Yeah, there is. Yeah, so how was, uh, how was your deal with, your, uh, with, your, with the hurricane this weekend, mijo? Oh, it was bad, man. It was bad. It got in. It hit us like that. It started getting real heavy around... As soon as the UFC fights actually finished, mm -hmm. maybe like around 9, 30, 10 o'clock. And then by midnight, we started to get a little worried. You know, the water, the street was covered. And then 3 in the morning, it started coming in through the garage. So I was like, damn. Oh, no. So it got, I went in there. We started like putting the chairs on top of the table and picking up the rugs. And, and then like about 5 o'clock, uh, it got super heavy. And we thought, like, you know, yeah, like, this is it. This is the moment when the water just starts to come in. Yeah. Uh, but I don't know. Luckily, it just, it, I guess it just kind of stayed steady and it started going somewhere else around the, you know, around the neighborhood or around the block. And then we didn't really sleep all night. And finally, like, around 930, I guess, when the when the rain kind of stopped, like everybody else, like for everybody else, um, you know, it started receding a little bit. Yeah. And so, you live, uh, you live in a curve there in, uh, where the street curves and it's kind of like a, a cul-de-sac almost, but it's a curve yeah. of a street and it's right by a canal, man. Right. Yeah. Well, yeah, it's just, I mean, the backyard is pretty much the canal. I mean, there's, there's a, there's an alley, 
but I mean the the canal is right there. Yeah. And all the water actually funnels down mm -hmm. toward us. So. Yeah. But no, I mean we're good. Luckily the house is built. Uh, you know it's it's elevated a little bit, so that's kind of what really saved us. And you didn't lose any any light, we right? <laughs> we didn't lose any light. We didn't yeah, like at all. You Not guys even are for lucky. <laughs> five minutes, ten minutes, an hour, nothing. I mean, we watched the whole UFC fight. Damn. We were in the garage, you listening to music and watching PVT <laughs> clips. Uh, Damn, you know, till wow. like three, four in the morning, till yeah. Alyssa dragged me inside. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> By the ear, right? Ya metete pa dentro, Rani. I know. I told her, hey, what do you want? I'm, I mean, I'm here at home. Ah. <laughs> hey. Ay, ay, ay. Orale. Hey, so we were talking about the Major League Baseball. It started, man, but there's kind of like something going on right now, right? They had to cancel some, some games or something like that? Yeah, what I heard is that uh, the... Man, I know it's a Florida team. I've been at work all day. It's but the, Miami, kinda, kinda, the Miami uh, Marlins. Okay, it's a, it's the Marlins squad. Yeah, like a handful of players and some coaches uh, tested positive for COVID. So the teams that they that they were supposed to play actually just left, yeah. like out of you know they went back you know to their uh, to their city. Um, I mean, there's been a handful of guys, but for some reason this just it just popped up you mm -hmm. know in today. Uh, there's been players that have opted out. Uh, you know, uh, one of the biggest names is David Price. He's a he used to pitch for the Red Sox and now he's with the Dodgers. And uh, he put out a tweet that said, uh, "Now we'll see if the major, if Major League Baseball really cares about its players." Mm -hmm. um, you know, because his whole thing was that MLB didn't care because you know they still wanted him to play. And he actually opted out. Uh, I mean, he's healthy and you know, uh, and he can play. He's just he's just opted out of the out of the season. And it's only 60 games. Yeah, but. He's one of the biggest names. You know, so I don't just keep, say, you know what, I don't want to play. Uh -huh. I don't keep up with uh, with baseball too much. I mean, usually when I watch it, it's the World Series and stuff. But uh, uh -huh. but I don't really keep up with it. And I really haven't really attended many games at all. I mean, we've been to I've been to like an Astros game like twice in the past 35, 40 years. Uh, mm -hmm. And uh, but uh, I notice that uh, they're they're getting a little bit more politically active. I know at the beginning of the of the season, which was I think last week. Uh, there was some deal about the, them kneeling before the national anthem, not during the national anthem, and then mm -hmm. uh, the Astros wearing uh, Black Lives Matter, um, also a garb uh, while they were or t-shirts while they were uh, practicing. Yeah, before, um, like I don't keep up too much with uh, the the sports, you know, um, the sports groups and stuff like that. What's the what's the 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 opinion of uh, you know like your friends? That have that um, that that uh, what uh, is it that podcast, podcast? You know, like, yeah, like uh, like what's the what's the consensus of of the major league baseball fans on on what they're yeah. doing? Uh, yeah, 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 on that um, stuff. I mean, because I'm, I'm, I mean, what I'm hearing is a lot of people aren't liking it. Uh, they call baseball America's pastime because it's one of the oldest sports you know in the nation, mm -hmm. and it's it's kind of like homegrown. You know, uh, soccer's big, in, uh, you know, internationally. Um, you know, golf, uh, you know, even, um, you know, other sports. So, I mean, baseball is kind of like our thing, you know, baseball is like, yeah, it's you know, it, baseball, it's America, apple pie, it's past yeah, and hot yeah. dogs. Yeah. So a lot of, uh, a lot of fans don't like it. They were kind of hoping that they didn't get political, uh, on the pitcher's mounds, uh, the major league logo, you know, it's MLB, which is major league baseball. And if you flip it around, it's black lives matter. So they're putting that. <laughs> On the pitcher's mounds. Yeah, uh, I saw that, dude. Mm -hmm. Yeah, there was some tweet and somebody put, uh, "Hey, this guy must be dis uh, di dyslexic." Lexic, because yeah. he, he put he put a MLB backwards. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, there was even uh, some fans. Uh, I saw videos. Uh, some 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 Dodger fans, like diehard, you know, East LA, you know, Dodgers till I die, and uh, he was wearing his Dodgers jersey and he like takes it off and he throws it on his driveway and he you know burns it. Mm -hmm. uh, and then, and then in the background, he has like a massive Trump flag hanging. Yeah. Uh, so I mean, I mean, and the guy's you know Hispanic, and he says as he's burning the jersey, he's like, "I will never be a Dodgers fan again because of what Major League Baseball did to the game." Mm -hmm. So, I mean, that's kind of what I'm what I'm hearing, and it's tough because baseball was losing a lot of viewers to begin with. Yeah. And now with this, they might even lose those hardcore viewers who they thought they never were going to lose. That's, you know, that's what I was thinking as well. I mean, uh, you know, um, a lot of people, they go to a baseball game, they go to enjoy and, and kind of escape 
you know, yeah. this political climate, the violence, the riots, all that. I mean, yeah. dude, the last place you want to hear anything, I would imagine, for a sports fan is at the game. Yes. You know, you go to the game, you want to see the game, you want to see the, you want to be entertained by the, the professional athletes that are getting Correct, paid yeah. millions of dollars, you know, and then it comes up, it comes down to that, and they're like, they get out of their homes, they get away from their TVs, they get away from their internets, and they sit in a in a in a chair after they've paid mm. like two, three, four hundred dollars to watch a baseball game, and the first thing yeah. that pops up is you know something political, and uh, you yeah, know, I, I don't know what what is your take on that, Mijo? I think you kind of hit it on the head when you said that you know they pay to go somewhere. It's like if you know you pay to go see a movie. You know, you pay to go to a concert, uh, you know, you're paying because you want to go relax and you want to have fun. And, you know, just like you said, I mean, you want to you want to let loose, you mm -hmm. know, if, if, if you want to watch the news or if you want to be political uh, about stuff, you know, that's when you go to the forums or you go in search of, you know, a news channel or, you know, a YouTube guy. But when you do something for leisure, like go to a baseball game, go to a football game. Uh, you know, and you pay your hard money and you go get that $10 hot dog and that, you know, $16 beer. Uh, wearing, you know, a 50, not... <laughs> wearing a $50 jersey, you know? <laughs> yeah. And, and like the nosebleeds. Yeah. Yep. <laughs> uh, you're not going to want to uh, hear somebody, you know, for five minutes, maybe, you know, because uh, I know at some of the games they, they do like little, not speeches, but, you know, hey, today's game, you want to remember so-and-so or you want to do this or, you know. Yeah. You know, uh, and and it gets thrown out there through there. And then you see maybe your favorite player doing it. And you're kind of like, man, you were my favorite player. You know, you're cool. I, I, I kind of felt the same way you do. But then I see you do this and, and I kind of don't like that. So, I mean, it could turn into a terrible all around experience. Yeah. And uh, well, well, we'll see how it goes. You know, right now, I mean, they're, I think they're going to be canceling some games and they're kind of they were going to have like a, an emergency meeting to decide what they're going to mm -hmm. do from here on in. How do you think that's going to affect the NFL, man? Because I was hearing that the preseason was probably going to be like non-existent this year. No. But yeah. Yeah. No, uh, uh, it is. As far as the NFL goes, there's there's not going to be any preseason at all. They already they already confirmed it. Um, they confirmed it a couple of days ago, um, which a lot of the players didn't really care for, you know, they don't get paid. I mean, they get paid for preseason games, but I mean, it's not much. Um, the ones that get paid preseason are the owners mm -hmm. because they're still selling tickets and they still have the TV contract. Yeah. Um, so the preseason's more for, you know, the owners and the economical I and mean, the economic side, because first of all, starters don't even play. Yeah. Does anybody really watch preseason? You know, mm. maybe the the third game. I think it is. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> or the one, you know? or the Dallas Cowboys versus the Houston Texans. <laughs> That's yeah. about the only preseason they watch in Texas, I think. Yep. Or the most yeah. watched preseason game. Yeah. So I mean, it's it's done as far as preseason. It's done. What the players want to do is kind of um, work their way into it. They want to have like. Uh, uh, I think it was 21 days of uh, weightlifting, training, uh, another 10 days uh, for like on-field drills, and then 14 days of like full padded, you know, practice just to get their bodies, you know, acclimated yeah. to it. So the, basically they're still working out. They're just not having games. You know what? Uh, that, and this... then they want to go right into it to a week one yeah we want and you know this might help the the injury deal right or no what do you think because uh the guys will be fresh on on that day pretty much well they usually are the, the starters as well mm -hmm. anyway so i guess not but uh no 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 yeah i mean as far as uh as far as the health side of it you mean like with injuries and stuff like that i mean yeah, because the sometimes they get, they get hurt like in preseason, bro. You know yeah, what I mean? Yeah, I mean, one, the top guys aren't going to play regardless. You know, mm -hmm. you're not going to have Dak, Zeke, uh, you know, Drew Brees out there like that. And for a lot of these older guys, the Aaron, you know, Aaron Rodgers, Drew Brees, um, you know, even Brady. I mean, it's I mean, it's awesome for them. They don't have a preseason and, you know, they have less chances to get hurt. I mean, everybody remembers what three, four years ago, what happened to Romo preseason game mm -hmm. last game he ever played and that's yeah. you know how that got introduced yeah. so for the veteran players health wise it's perfect for them the yeah. only thing that's gonna that's gonna kind of suck is since there's no preseason is that all the guys that are trying to make roster spots yeah and i kind of like watching the youngsters trying to get that spot dude you know 
you yeah. know, it's fun to watching them sometimes as well, man. So yeah, so I mean, you have those guys. First of all, there's they started with ninety guys, and they're not going to do ninety guys anymore. They're going down to eighty mm-hmm. uh, because for social distancing, it's easier for them to have eighty guys in the locker room. Yeah. Uh, but then, I mean, as just like you said, you know, you watch those players in the games trying to make the roster, and now how are they going to prove themselves? And besides that, you know what I'm just thinking right now, dude, is like if uh, if four or five dudes in the team are you know positive for coronavirus that's gonna weaken the team super bad and they have to be out for like two or three weeks so if you have five players out of your team from your first string roster that's gonna be kind of detrimental for them to be able to compete isn't it yeah i mean definitely i mean if you have a guy like you know well zeke suppose they already had it or didn't have it or whatever they were talking about on the internet i mean say that he does get it I mean, he's going to have to get quarantined for two weeks. You know, I mean, those two weeks could be critical and say he gets somebody else sick. And then that guy goes down and that guy goes down. Yeah. What they did do, though, was that they gave teams. I don't know how many spots it is. It might be three. It might be five. Uh, but a designated injury list. So say, for example, they want to keep the guy on the team. Um, they can reserve that spot for him. Okay. Or, you know, something like that is uh, is what I heard. But, yeah, I mean, if somebody gets COVID on the team, especially if it's a star player, I mean, it's going to, I mean, it's definitely, definitely going to hurt the team. It's just like when they get suspended for, you know, fighting. Yeah. Uh, you know. Yeah, but so. I mean, this is like I said, it, it, if somebody gets suspended for fighting, it's one guy or two guys. Mm. In this case, five dudes might end up coming out, you know, positive, And then all five of them have to be extracted from the team. And then yeah. it's really going to be really tough. It's going to be a very interesting season, man, for sure. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, definitely. And then it's kind of like if everybody's going through it right now, you know, from the worst teams to the best teams and then and it, maybe, uh-huh. and, and, and maybe it makes it fun because maybe all the teams that are supposed to be super good this year. What if all their players get hurt? And then you have all the crappy teams, you know, you know, surprise, you know, the world, you know, and maybe, you know, make it to the playoffs, you know, this year when they've never made it before, uh, you know? So, I mean, there's a lot of, there's a lot of angles to it. How is this going to affect fantasy football, man? Ooh. <laughs> uh, I mean, it's probably not. Everybody's going to be crazy about fantasy football regardless. Um, so, I mean, I don't think – I mean, to me, you know, yeah, I might go into into your strategy a little bit, but you're still going to want to pick those top-tier guys. Yeah. Um, and if they get hurt, well, <laughs> they get hurt, you just got to get on the waiver wire. Yeah, man. It's going to be an interesting – so you saw the UFC this uh, past Saturday, man. We didn't get to watch it. I wanted to see it as well. Uh, what were the two best fights uh, Saturday night, Ron? Uh, the two best fights, man. Uh, let me see. I mean, the main events were good. They all went five rounds, but there wasn't really anything kind of spectacular about it. I want to say the actually the ladies fight. Uh, it was uh, Esparza versus Rodriguez. She was from Brazil, and Esparza was uh, is from here. Uh, they went three rounds, and uh, Rodriguez girl, she's a a striker, so she put some. I mean, some crazy chingazos on that spot. So her <laughs> eye was like busted, man. man. Her eye was busted, but she's but she's a wrestler. She, you know, uh, they yeah. call her the Cookie Monster. So uh, she, you know, she would get hit, but then she would, you know, wrestle the girl down. And it was a split decision, uh, 29 28, 29 28, and actually one judge went 30 27. Mm. Um, but as far as I won, and that was probably an entertaining fight because it was back and forth and back and forth. Mm-hmm. Um, there was another one. Uh, I can't what remember. What about the guy's that Shogun name. match? How was that? The one? Shogun. I mean, the Shogun uh, fight was good. He was fighting a little nog. I mean, these guys have fought since you know Pride. They've been in the game forever. And I think, if I'm not mistaken, uh, Little Nog uh, Donquera retired uh, on the mic after after the fight. But I mean, mm-hmm. you're talking about veteranos. I mean, who are you know 20 years in the fighting game. Um, it was a good fight. Uh, you know, classic heavyweight fight. Or uh, actually, I think they're lightweights, but uh rua had his spots shogun had his spots uh you know i mean again for that ufc big fan uh you know who's followed the ufc history even pride i mean that's what i mean that's probably the best fight of the night for them mm-hmm. uh you know but for the guy who kind of wants to see you know a lot of fireworks uh there was another fight there was a guy from brazil he fought this up and comer too. I think the guy was 41 years old and he was getting his butt whipped. And then he just came with an overhand left and he hits the guy on the Damn. forehead. And the guy, I mean, just like a board to the ground. And he hits the mat and the and the 41 year old's on top and he's gonna punch him. And right before he does, he kind of looks at the ref 
like, but like quítame like, lo, bro. Hey, like he's out. No, like no, like dude, like he's out cold. Like uh-huh. you really want me to hit him again? So the ref doesn't stop it, and he just hits him and hits him and hits him, and then finally the ref steps in. And yeah. actually, the commentators got kind of upset, and they were, uh, you know, making some comments about uh, Herb Herb Dean, which was the ref I, uh, during that fight. I don't remember ever seeing somebody get knocked down by hit, getting hit in the forehead. Uh, I mean, usually it's uh-huh. the jaw right behind the ear. Mm-hmm. No, it's just he got caught right wow. on the forehead and That's just crazy. his eyes rolled back. And yeah, it was a really good card. It was on ESPN Plus. It wasn't even a pay per view. So, um, I mean, it was a solid card. We've got uh, some. But uh, I want to say that's uh, the that's the last one because they have a. It was a fight night, uh, and uh, on the fight island, that fight island that they've been pushing. Yeah. Um. So and uh, Abu Dhabi, I believe it was somewhere close over there. So, but yeah, that's it. They're 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 done over there so we'll see how it goes when they come back over here with you know all the covid stuff we've got some uh comments on there what do we got Ma? Is there... um we have dinos is uh, is saying ask ronnie what he thinks about oh my goodness about tyson's Chief... comeback fight yeah tyson we're just gonna get yes. to that sticking to the fight uh game mm-hmm. uh uh-huh. mike tyson uh, Iron Mike was seeing green when he signed his contract to fight Roy Jones Jr. Puffing away on a joint, dude. That would make Snoop <laughs> Dogg proud. Did you see that dude? The dude smoking a doobie. And they, I they, saw. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah. I mean, I saw some. You know, after seeing that footage of him, you know, smoking a doobie and you know, and then uh-huh. signing the contract, and then Roy Jones Jr. doing the same thing, and they were doing it like sort of Skype style because they weren't in the same room together. Uh-huh. Then I saw some footage of Mike. You know, working out. Training. I mean, dude, yeah. that dude's still a beast, bro. Yeah, no, no, no. Yeah, I think. I mean, I think the the fighting, the training uh, videos came out before, and I think those. That's what kind of sparked sparked it up. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, no, no pun intended. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> but I think, yeah, I think that's kind of what, what sparked up interest, and then Roy Jones just you know just came out of nowhere uh, and took the fight. But I mean, it's um. It's an exhibition fight, so I mean, I think them smoking is not <laughs> is not gonna matter much. Uh, Who do you think is gonna win that fight, man? Iron Iron Mike. I mean, I, I mean, I think. I mean, Roy Jones was the one who's who who fought most most recently. His last fight was uh, in 2018, mm-hmm. he, but he's he's 51 uh, years old. He's 66 and nine with 47 knockouts. Tyson's 54, so he's three years older. And his last fight. Um, Man, it was against Danny McBride or mm. no Kevin McBride, uh, and 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 he didn't even come out after the sixth round. Um, yeah. You know, he just said, "Nah, yeah, I don't want to fight anybody Charlie. anymore." <laughs> yeah, so but he's, I mean, he's his record is fifty wins, six knockouts, and forty four. Uh, uh, yeah, I'm sorry, six losses and forty four have been knockouts. Um, you know, so I think Tyson's gonna win, but you can't count out Roy Jones. I mean, yeah, you know, he's three years younger. I mean, he's still, a, you know, a, a multiple weight class champ. Uh, I mean, he's a big guy, too. So, I mean, I just hope no, you know, my mind has happened or nothing like that. I mean, I hope they fight, you know, the full <laughs> round and, you know, at least put on put on a show, put on a good, uh, yeah. you know, exhibition. Yeah. And, you know, uh, it's interesting because I think out of the chins, I would think Roy Jones Jr. has a weaker chin than Tyson, dude. You know, because Tyson, yeah. he, I mean, Buster Douglas knocked his ass down way back when, but uh, you know, Buster Douglas was a big dude, uh, and I've seen uh, Roy Jones Jr. be—he's been knocked down before, and it seems like mm-hmm. he has a weak chin. But uh, and if Mike Tyson connects him, man, I think he might knock him out. I don't know, but yeah, I mean, even at fifty-four years old, I mean, you, you, you don't think if Mike Tyson punches you in the chin, you're gonna, you're gonna get knocked <laughs> yeah. the hell out? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but you know, especially with him training, uh-huh. you know. So, well, the thing about it also is the legs. You know, yeah. I mean, Roy Jones Jr.'s legs are probably going to be a little better than Tyson's, maybe. You know, and I mean, yeah, that, the the legs give out, then you can start, you know, hitting somebody, and they'll they'll fall, dude. You know what I mean? Yeah, I think I think the fatigue, my, my you know, I'm 
but that, that's why I said I hope they give us the full eight round exhibition because yeah, maybe by you know the first or second, maybe the end of the first, maybe the second round, they might already be you know like huffing and puffing, man, you know, and then they might just get into a draggy fight, maybe the uh, you know where they're hugging each other and you know all that stuff. So yeah, uh, as long as they keep it you know entertaining, I mean, I think it'd just be cool to see something like that. And as long uh, as Mike Tyson doesn't bite an ear or anything, right? you, know, <laughs> like, you know what's so funny? I was watching a meme. Uh, and it was a uh, it was uh, Evander Holyfield with uh, the mask, right? Like a mask for the COVID, uh, and yeah. it was just hanging from one ear. And he looks at the he's looking at the camera, and it says in the bottom, "Thanks, Mike Tyson," because <laughs> he, he, he doesn't have the other he ear dude, to hold the freaking <laughs> yeah. mask, bro. <laughs> oh my goodness! Hey, who I appreciate you taking the time, man, to uh, talk with us. We need to do this more often, man. We have a lot of fans that are in the chat box that are like freaking mm-hmm. out, and they really like talking sports man something very very uh that everybody's into you know yeah and, for uh, sure i mean and this is kind of the first time we do it you know it's, it was kind of like an impromptu thing yeah uh but I, i'm excited for you know the seasons you know to officially get started so we can you know recap games and, yeah you know give our give our predictions before the games start um uh, basketball will be back soon mm-hmm. actually i think in a, in a couple days baseball's already on um you know so there's a lot of stuff for us to talk about and you know yeah. uh uh, get into and we haven't even you know uh, gone into the you know the cowboys yet. yeah 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 we'll get there yeah we'll but you know there. what i think uh, uh we're definitely going to designate a, a night that we, we just get together and we talk about this stuff and then get everybody involved sure. as well so that'll be yeah, something yeah, that's wanna, part of the see some comments some, yeah some, it, some comments from the fans we'll get so, some sponsorships so. and we'll be able to you know uh, give you a few bucks for your time and your effort and your research <laughs> and all that and your expertise no man honestly bro i mean yeah. this is what it's all about i mean uh we're we're uh independent content creators you know and uh and mm-hmm. usually we can get sponsorships to help us out and, you know that way we can you know we can uh, at least pay for the gas and the water burger after the show you know what i'm yeah. saying you know? <laughs> yeah. yeah yeah we can we can go back and uh, rewatch uh, the show and, we'll, and then we'll either tell ourselves hey we you know we're smart we know what we're talking about or damn we some <laughs> hey, it doesn't matter as long as it's entertaining, dude. You know, that's all that matters. Yeah, and uh, then we'll we, get into the betting aspect of it, too. I know there's a lot of people that like to bet down here. So, you know, we'll go, you know, talk about the odds and, mm-hmm. uh, you know, all this stuff. Man. Yeah, the so, sky's the limit, yeah. man. I mean, I'm sky telling you, I mean, my PVT network is just going to grow. <laughs> And it's gonna it's gonna have a lot of different content, a lot of uh, entertainment for all walks of life, and and I, I want you to be a part of it because I know and I've always known that you were a, an awesome uh, an awesome sports. Uh, you know, I always thought you were gonna be a sports broadcaster, <laughs> to tell you the truth, or a well, sports that's journalist. What I went to Pat for, but that didn't work out. <laughs> <laughs> hey, by the way, somebody in the chat box was saying he sounds sober. <laughs> <laughs> Man, you know, a quick story. Saturday night when we were out there watching the UFC and watching the PBT, I, I finally got the courage to to turn on the show that we uh, from last Saturday when I called in uh-huh. because, like, uh, you know, uh, Ali was like, he's like, man, like, I can't believe you did that. And like, you sounded all down. And hey, I was like, man, what? So Felicia, was, uh, Felicia I, I te puso el dedo, bro. <laughs> <laughs> I was super aguitado, man. I was like, man, I don't even want to watch the replay. Yet. So it was Ali, hilarious. La- yeah. So so this past Saturday, when I was a little tipsy again, I just said, hey, you know what? Throw it on. I mean, yeah. But, uh, man, we were, you know, we were laughing about it. But, uh, I yeah. mean, every time we get together on the show, it's always a good time. So, well, as long as you don't uh, get I hurt and you're safe, it. and uh, that's all that matters to <laughs> me, man. You know? Yeah. All right. Thanks, Bob. That one, I'll see you later. And God bless you. And I love you. And, uh, you know. All right. Yes, Talk to you next time. All right. All right. All right. Have a there good you show. had it. Yeah. <laughs> that was awesome. I know. I, I was able to chat with people a little bit while you guys went all out. <laughs> that is awesome, man. I, I just had an amazing time right now with my son on the phone line. And uh, I mean, I, I, honestly, I always told him, uh, I see you as a, as a sports broadcaster because uh, he used to love sports when he was a kid. And he excelled in sports. He, he did tennis. He did a little bit of football. He was quarterback, but then he got hurt, and he didn't want to go back to that. And I told him, hey, Mijo, you don't have to play football. There's a lot of other stuff. There's golf. There's, you know, uh, tennis. So he got into tennis. He got into golf. And then he was in baseball when he was a kid. You know, we had him playing baseball since he was a little kid. And then he became a pretty well-rounded pitcher as well uh, for the Mercedes Tigers. And so, you know, I'm very proud of him. And you know, I always thought he'd be part of the, uh, you know, uh, broadcasting team of some 
uh, sports network. And uh, and but uh, you know why not my PVT network? That's what it's all about, right? Yes, of course. This is where opportunity grows, man. Mm-hmm. This is where opportunity is available. Mm-hmm. We appreciate all of you. I hope you all enjoyed that stuff, man. I did. It was very informative. It really was. Yeah. Don't forget uh, tomorrow, Tuesday, the Dead of Tuesday at 6 o'clock. And throw- Tuesday Night Live. Yeah, Tuesday Night Live. Tomorrow we'll be talking with uh, J.D. Mata. He's an actor Ooh. originally from the Rio Grande Valley. He's in Los Angeles, and we're going to talk to him, see what it's like over there. He was on uh, this uh, vampire series, uh, and uh, First Blood, I think was the name. No, not First Blood. Uh, True Blood. He was on that, on that program. So we'll be talking to him tomorrow. And then on Thursday, we have the Thursday mix, Throwback Thursday at 6 o'clock, and then we have the Rock and Chaz show as well, okay? So make sure to subscribe and hit the little bell because a lot of people sometimes they tell us, hey, Rock, I didn't get notified. Well, you might have to hit the little bell. You, you hit the little bell and three little things pop up and hit the top one, and every time we come on, boom, you get notified and you can watch the show, okay? All right, live, all right, like you're doing right now. So we'll be right back. We're going to take a quick pause for the cause, and we'll come back with a hashtag PBT. Three questions for the fans, and boy, we got a good one. I bet you guys are going to, I don't know, women, I hope there's some women on the line too because I'd like to hear their answer as well. So uh, we'll be right back. Here's a message from our sponsor right here in Hashtag PBT. In response to our current COVID-19 situation, Dr. T's Primary Care is offering discounted prices on our IV vitamin infusion therapy for all frontline workers, law enforcement, and any male or female patient looking to improve their immune system. Not only do we offer PCR testing for COVID, but we also offer safe and natural solutions to improve your health. Call 956-441-2188 and ask about our discounted IV vitamin infusion therapy. Therapy. Follow us on Facebook for up-to-date information. Call 956-441-2188. About three years ago, I was uh, set at a $300,000 bond for three crimes. From one day to another, I went from being, you know, a coach, knowing a lot of parents, people around the whole PSJ area, McAllen, Edinburgh, around the whole valley. From one day to another, I lost all of that. I went to jail for 21 days and my family met Mr. Flores and he helped us out. You know, he helped me out to reduce my bond from 300,000 to 50,000. I was back at home and I went to court for about a year. But Mr. Flores, what I was telling me, I got it. I would call him all the time, like I'd be freaking out. Mr. Flores, two, three in the morning, I'd call Mr. Flores and Mr. Flores would answer my phone calls and he'd be like, hey bro, like, Chill out, it's gonna be all right, just leave it up to me. I don't know what he saw in me, that he believed that, you know, what I was telling him, man. You know, little by little, the things started coming out. I recommend Mr. Flores because he doesn't see you as money. He saw me as a family member or as a brother or as, you know, so he treats you like with with heart. And nowadays, that's, especially in that world, it's very hard to find. Yes, sir. Thank you so much to our sponsors. Dr. T's Primary Care for Men. And and I tell you what, if it wasn't for them, we wouldn't be on right now. So we want to thank them. Thank you. That's very important. They're helping us out. And we're capable of, uh, you know, upgrading some of our equipment and stuff like that. Uh, One of these days, uh, you know, as a matter of fact, we'll probably end up buying a generator. (laughs) Yes. And some type of uh, (laughs) box that will give us Wi-Fi and stuff, right? (laughs) So in case we're ever in a hurricane again. We can be on live, you know, with the wind and stuff, you know, and yes. then we'll get into a deep puddle somewhere and say, you know, <laughs> like the big time news corporations, yes, yes. you know. Yes. All right. So uh, it's time for hashtag PVT. Three questions for the fans. <laughs> so I think it'll be a bit quick since it's just me and you, darling. All righty. Not unless uh, we call fish. You want to call fish? Let's see. Maybe she'll yeah. answer. <laughs> Let me see here. All right, where's oh there she is. Let's see if she answers. I told her she was. She... Hello. Fish. Yes. You're live on hashtag PVT. Hello. Oh hi, hello. How's everything? <laughs> Good. How was your hurricane experience? Um. It was okay. I mean, it wasn't, 
I I thought it was, you know, I was prepared for the worst, but um, thank God, you know, we, we did get a lot of heavy winds and, you know, some of our trees in the front of my house, um, they were a little damaged. Um, we didn't get flooding, thank God. Um, you know, usually our street floods because it's like a it's like at a weird angle. But uh, we didn't get too much flooding. I was a little, I was a little mad because my PS4, our lights went out for like <laughs> a split, like a couple of minutes. They went out mm-hmm. and then they came back on, and then they would go out and come back on and, and go out, and it was just like going out, going like that for a while. And then um, other than that, I mean, our lights stayed on and everything. The next day, our lights went out oh, for a few man. hours. Yeah, during the day, they were out. And I was uh, I was taking a nap and I woke up and I was like, man, it's hot in here. And I was like sweating and I turned on my light and no, was no there's no light. So I was like, ching, <laughs> girl. So oh my I was just kicking it there at home and I said, pues ni modo, I have 10% on my phone. I have no light. Oh. I said, I'm just going to go back to sleep. <laughs> and then as soon as I closed my eyes to go back to sleep, zoom, the lights came back on. Oh. I was like, oh my God, yeah. it was but yeah, I know like right now I'm here at my grandparents' house. If there's a lot of background noise, I'm sorry. They have a generator running. They haven't had light since I want to say about two days, going on three. Yeah, um, man. I know there's there's no air con. There's nothing like that. I know a lot of people are going through it right now. So I, mean, I know my heart's out to everybody. Hey, by the way, I've got a uh, if your grandparents need a, uh, you know, a portable AC unit. I have one here at the house if you need me to take it or you need us to take it. So let us know, okay? Yeah, okay, for sure. I'll let you know. But um, yeah. I mean, other than that, thank God, they didn't get any flooding. I think that was, you know, one of the most important things. I know a lot of people, unfortunately, got water in their homes. And mm-hmm. that's really sad. I mean, it damages your home. Um, electricity, you know, God willing, it'll come back soon. Um, but, you know, the water in the homes and the flooding was the, was the really bad, bad part of it all. Yeah. And, um I mean, I, I, luckily, like I said, our my neighborhood was okay. Um, we didn't have any flooding. Our lights were basically on. Um, but I know a lot of people who are out there right now that are suffering, you know, with yeah. electricity and water flooding. So, you know. We were we were sitting in the living room. I was in underwears and Rally was in <laughs> her thong. Oh, my God. <laughs> I was not. Oh, my God. No, she Jeez. was wearing my boxer shorts, I think. I was. Oh my yeah <laughs> and she had like her shirt like tied up between her you know her yeah and just like sweating it was hot oh, and yeah. i was sitting there with just chanclas and calzoncillos you know and we're like okay shall we should we rent a room or what and she was like yeah. i'm not gonna leave the dogs here it's 95 degrees inside the house i'm not gonna leave the dogs it I'm like it's hot right now um my uncle my uncle Ram, his friend was very nice, very generous enough to lend him a, a you know, a, he had a generator. So we do have, we, we are using that. My grandparents are using that for lamps, you know, for lighting. Um, and they have, um, my uncle also bought them a small little unit just to keep one of the house at least fresh. So they're in that room. Yeah. Uh, but like right now I'm in the kitchen and it's dark and it's super hot. Like yeah. it's hot without AC. Like it's hot without electricity. Like we're spoiled. It, I mean, to live without AC is hard. But um, Rally, look, check this out. So yesterday we were like in the living room and I said, and Rally said, no. I mean, when I said, okay, well, let me think of something. So I said, I'm going to go outside in the truck and I'm going to charge my phone up. And I'm outside in the porch and I look at the screens. I say, you know what? I need to put a screen on one of the beds. Uh, bedrooms uh, that didn't have a screen and then we can uh-huh. sleep on that bed you know it's the one where dad stays like the vi- the, yeah. the, the guest room the other room yeah and i said so I'll, I'll do that right so then i get in the truck and i turn on the truck and i'm in there with the ac and i'm talking with my dad and then the phone is like there's a call coming in and i look and it's rally right so then i said dad i gotta go rally's calling me from inside the house and i go and i answer the phone and she goes, we got light. <laughs> we, we got light. I, I I'm in tears. Oh that it's, really, it's that really was me. Yeah. Oh, my goodness. That really was like, me. It's times like these that make me think, like, what could we seriously do if, like, you know, we'd be out of electricity for a good while, you know? Like, 
for weeks and weeks. I mean, it's tough. But, you know, like I said, like electricity, God willing, you know, I know every all the men out there, women, men that work the, you know, those businesses that go and fix the lights and everything. Yeah, AEP. We're very AEP, very thankful for them. I mean, they're doing their jobs. I know there's a lot of people without electricity right now. Yeah. So, I mean, slowly but surely we'll be getting back up. You know? And the but, thing about it is there's some areas like Frank Salinas, a friend of mine, he lives in an area where all the 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 electrical poles fell down oh, so they no. have to they have to pick them up put them back up or put new poles and yeah. then run the cable i mean it's going to take days i mean it's not going to be an overnight fix yeah and it's going to take time yeah so he said one of his friends got him a generator as well but i mean there's yeah. just some areas that people need to understand that you know what the the, the hand their hands are tight they're working as fast as possible but the job is yeah. a little bigger to bring back that electricity you know yeah. Definitely. It's like here, my grandparents, they live over here on the southern side of, of Mission and by the expressway. And it's like all this area like is complete darkness across the street. There's a, a gated trailer park area and mm -hmm. they're all in the, they're all in darkness. Like it's just dark on that side. Yeah. So there's a, like a lot of people on the south side of Mission, I know, are affected by, you know, the electricity not being there. And, you know, it's hard. It's tough. But um, and there, you know, I, I know when I was out there, when, when the hurricane hit, well, was here a few days ago, I want to say Saturday, I was outside in my front patio and I was just like watching the rain and the wind and everything. And then I would just see like huge green, like light, like lights in the sky, like light the sky, like green lights. Yeah. And it was all these transformers that were just busting. Like the wind yeah. was just destroying them. It was crazy. I was, I was hearing like, that stuff around here. I was hearing exp yeah. many explosions and it was left and right. Yeah. 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 All right. But, well, uh, I'm glad you're okay. And uh, I'm really, uh, yeah. you know, I'm glad your grandma and your grandpa got that, uh, that generator from uh, your uncle's a friend. Uh, very yeah, generous. And sure. yeah, man, we really appreciate him helping you all out. And, uh, and then you've got that little AC unit to help them, uh, you know, cause I mean, your grandparents are about 80 years old. And, and, and that's the thing that's yeah. scary right now is like most uh, most elderly people that are shelter in place because of this COVID can't, can't afford to get out of the house and go to some place they don't that's, uh, you know, a, you know, that's alien to them or that's not where they usually go because they're in, yeah. you know, they're in danger of get contracting this damn and that's, COVID. And that's another, yeah, that's another thing. You know, I, of course, my I had offered them to go to my home. Um, but I mean, I couldn't have them over because I, you know, I hadn't, I hadn't mentioned this, but I did get tested for COVID. Thank God I got my results back today. They came back negative. Mm -hmm. Thank God I'm negative. I'm negative. I'm COVID free. But you know, now I can, you know, at least get them to my home, but we're in shelter in place right now. So it's a little tough because, you know, I can't just move them quickly. You know, my grandmother's in a wheelchair. It's a little hard and you know, they, they feel just better being, I feel better than just being here, but you know, it's just hard. It's hard with all the shelter in place. You're right. It's not it's not easy for people to just be switching and moving. Yeah. Sleeping at areas, sleeping at places where there's air con or there's light, you know. Yeah. Hey, so well, I'm here with them. But yeah. Yeah. And, you know, all our fans out there. I mean, if you know anybody that's elderly and they need some help, you know, hey, go over yeah. there and knock on their door and put your mask on and say, hey, is there any way we can help? If they make sure they have electricity, you know, make sure they have running water, make sure they've got what they need and, you know, their medications and all that stuff. I mean, it's always good to help thy neighbor. Uh, just in case, yeah. you know, because uh, I'd rather, you know, if I had one AC unit and my neighbors were elderly, I'd give it to them and I'd be in the hot house. I, I, you know, that's just the way we are. Yeah, uh, definitely, because so. it is a little harder for them. Like, that's exactly what, you know, right now we just got making some food for my grandma and we have to, you know, feed her and give her her medication. And, you know, they can't really move much. So they're just kind of sitting there in the living room. But it, it is tougher for the elderly people that are, you know, fortunately without light and, and everything right now. So, just, okay. you know, if you can help out, yeah, I help out. <laughs> yeah. Okay, well, we've got the three questions for the fans. You want to be part of it? It's not going to take too long, I don't think. I mean. Uh, yeah, I can I can be part of it okay. for sure. Okay, that's awesome. All right. So um, question number one for the fans. This is the PVT3. This is what we do on Saturday nights. What you're seeing tonight, folks, is a Saturday night program. And we're doing it tonight because Saturday night we had that Hurricane Hannah and it cut out our light and our Wi-Fi and everything. So that's why we're doing the show tonight. Special Monday edition. But this program is usually on Saturday night. So question number one, which public restrooms are worse, women or men? Ew. Okay, women or men? So, oh my god! Uh, well, <laughs> uh, so who goes well, first? I've, like I Felicia, guess, you go first. 
I, I can't say. I mean, the time that I've accidentally gone into men's restrooms, I mean, they don't. They what, don't wait do wait a second. Bad. Wait a minute. Accidentally? What do you mean? No, accident- you know how you accidentally go into the wrong restroom? It's happened to me before. Yeah, it's happened to me I don't know what's too. happened to you guys. <laughs> yeah, it has. Uh, but definitely, definitely, you know, I as a, me as a woman, I am so shocked at some of the restrooms I've seen. Some of the women's restrooms I've seen. Um, it's it's crazy how <laughs> they're 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 pretty bad sometimes. What like, what the really hell bad. do you see in there? What I mean, I've uh, never been in one. You know. I mean, you know, women go through certain times oh, um, of the month, and you know, just like everybody else, you know, we're you women are you know women they gotta go to the restroom, you know, but. Um, it's, it's tough. You know, I've seen, I've seen some restrooms and I'm like, but isn't there a trash can in there or somewhere where they can deposit whatever they got? Some people just totally disregard the trash can and just kind of (laughs) let it drop where it may fall. So are you kidding me? I've seen, yeah, I've seen some pretty, and some is this, pretty is this like, restrooms. is this like in nightclub restrooms or is it in like, uh, like, Oh my God, those are the worst. I'm not going to lie. There are some clubs that are very clean. They, you know, they have really nice restrooms, but then there's those, there's those few that, I mean, literally one time I went to a bar, I'm not going to name it, but I went to this bar, <laughs> I went to the restroom in one corner, there was vomit and another corner there was probably some type of urine something and then there was toilet paper it's like somebody tp'd the whole restroom it was crazy and i was just like jesus christ like i'd rather go pee outside but you know (laughs) at the the time everybody's like drunk and everybody's you know partying so they don't care they're just you know peeing anywhere and everywhere but yeah yeah, there's some restrooms that are women's restrooms are pretty intense well in my case you know the men you go into a men's restroom a public restroom and you know, the worst thing you see is like, you know, uh, droplets of uh, urine there at the bottom of the <laughs> urinal, you know, right there. There's like a. Yeah. And, uh, and, and then uh, you go into uh, the toilets and they're, they're always pretty clean, except when they, you know, have to urinate on the toilet. They piss all over the damn seat, man, which is something I hate. I don't understand why people, because you don't have to touch the toilet seat to open it up. You could just use your foot, you know? Yeah, <laughs> you just kick it open and even flush with your foot and everything, right? Yeah, I flush with my foot many times, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, uh, soy un dios says to name the bar fish. I don't know. Oh, uh, uh, I can't do that. <laughs> so, I'll tell you one thing. It's downtown, but I think everybody... <laughs> Okay, Rally, what about you? I mean, are you going to agree with Felicia or are you going to say, uh, you know? Yeah, I'm going to have to agree with her. The women's bathrooms are pretty scary. <laughs> um, it's like, I'd rather just hold it. But I will say, in the fall, when we were, um, when we were, uh, what is it called? Sorry. When we were traveling with the band, uh-huh. I thank you so much for stopping like at the loves travel stops and at Bucky's because uh-huh. those bathrooms Bucky's are always best. super duper clean. Yeah. Bucky smells good. Loves doesn't always smell good, but it's always clean. But Bucky's is like it's the best. But, but you stop at a convenience store? No, oh, no, it's trash. Yeah, no, 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 it's the trash. Bucky, the Bucky, the Bucky's restrooms are awesome because they're like individually closed. Like they don't have yes. like they're closed. They're like little little cubes little that you just go yeah, in. Yeah. So you actually feel your privacy. You're like, okay, like nobody can, you know, hear me. Nobody can. They can do whatever I want in here. But yes. yeah, the Bucky's for sure five stars. You know what? I, when, when I when there's no Bucky's or Loves close by, and I really gotta go, you know, uh, like the pinch of loaf. I'm not talking about just urinate, you know, because urinate doesn't matter to me. We could stop on the side of the road and go into the little woods area and do what we gotta do. But whenever I had to, like, I, I usually look for a hotel. And, oh, yeah, that's and then, a good idea. Uh, yeah, I'll get into the lobby and, and walk in and pretend like, hey, I'm going to my room and I'll just go to their bathroom and they're usually super clean. Uh, I remember one time you did that. <laughs> yeah. We were somewhere and you had to use the restroom and you stopped at a hotel. <laughs> I think we were, wasn't it when we were going to go check out Nickelback in Corpus, I think? And, I, and there I was, think so. There was a yeah, Days the in hotel. there in Bishop yeah. and I just... I stopped at the Days Inn. I'm like, what are you doing here, Dad? I'm just going to use the bathroom. <laughs> There's a store over there. I, I ain't going to the store. I got to go to this yeah. one. Because <laughs> if you go to the store and you go into the stripes or whatever, you open the bathroom and, oh, my God, you got to spend like 30 minutes I cleaning know. that place up. And uh, yeah. so, so, but uh, I, the, the ones that I've seen the worst are usually the, the 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 bathrooms that are for both men and women, you know. I mean, because they're everybody's oh, the shared it. ones. Yeah, the yeah, shared I ones. You know, the same one. Yeah. Yeah. So, uh, so anyway, that was question number one. Would we have any um, interesting question? Yeah. <laughs> uh, 
Uh, Joel Barron, uh, how, is ans- how is everyone answering before the question? I don't oh, have no idea. his Wi-Fi might be slow. Oh, okay. Uh, Maybe. You've got turtle Wi-Fi, Joel. <laughs> <laughs> uh, let me see. And then Raymond Rose says, do whatever you want, fish? In the buckies or whatever? No, you know what I mean. <laughs> What? <laughs> Felipe Menchaca en una bolsa de HB, Dad. You only oh live once, God. YOLO. Yikes. That's disgusting. Mark hey. Anthony says, I hate it when I make eye contact with someone through the crack of the stall while I'm oh sitting my there. God, that's, that's, the the worst. Worst. <laughs> that's the worst. I remember in college, I used to put toilet paper to cover that crack that was the cracks that were there. And the, like, you would hang, oh you would hang toilet paper and it covers the little the little gaps in there. You so, know, yeah, you know what? Uh, what the, they, there's a thing called the camel cough, right? The camel cough. What? That's it's like that's, that's what you do when somebody when like you're taking a dump, right, in the bathroom, and somebody walks in, and you go, <laughs> so they can know that you're in the stall. You know what I mean? It's like a, yeah. it's kind of a warning, like, hey, dude, this, there's somebody here. <laughs> right, some people disregard the warning, so yeah. <laughs> Um, so Raymond Rose is making fun of me. He goes, Nickelback Rock, come on, man. <laughs> I'm like, hey, she wanted to go see Nickelback, dude. You yeah, know? That was a and good, I took it was her. a good show. Yeah, it was a hell of a show. Those guys are really good. Uh, so uh, Victor Martinez says, Bucky's are freaking clean. Always. Yeah, they are. They're like the best ever. Yeah. Public restrooms. I like going to Bucky's, especially the one in Seguin or not in uh, New Braunfels. All right, so question number two. What would you do if you won ten thousand dollars? All right, what would you do if you won ten thousand dollars, fish? Oh my gosh! Um, <laughs> buy well, twenty, I mean, buy twenty PS fours. Right? <laughs> <laughs> you know what I would do if I got twenty thousand? I mean, ten thousand dollars. I would probably. I mean, I probably wouldn't cover all of it, but I want to buy a boat. Okay. Ooh. Um, that's you know that's just i mean that's something that i've always wanted a little boat because i like to I, I love the water and i love to like i like to fish and stuff and just having a boat would be cool just to take it out whenever i want mm-hmm. you know just to go chill on the boat and you know just hang out so yeah maybe probably buy a boat <laughs> super mm-hmm. random but yeah that's probably what i would do okay what about you babe oh my goodness um ten thousand bucks guys and girls if you uh won ten thousand dollars won't be able to buy a new boat but you know it's just something something well small, you, nice. your starter should always be a used one just in case <laughs> yeah. you don't you don't sally like what... sally j signs everywhere says buy a generator <laughs> yeah right yeah yeah that, yes, that's actually a good idea sure, so. buy a generator for the us, size of the house yes yes with ten thousand dollars <laughs> oh my goodness i'm not i'm not sure i honestly honestly because I know that you've taught me really, really well to like be a good steward with my money. So honestly, honestly, I would just save it mm-hmm. for, you know, things that a rainy day. No, for things that we're planning on doing um, in the future. So, um, yeah, I'm uh, I save it all every last time I would. Um, for me, ten thousand dollars. Oh, man, I'm I'm. I'm like probably like like rally. I mean, I I'd, I'd yeah. put it away. You would save and just, it. Yeah, yeah. I, what I do is I'll put money in the bank and I'll just chip away at it little by little. You know what I mean? And uh, but uh, yeah, no, I I, 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 w- I would really like <laughs> what I really want to do is I want to get one of those new. They're like they're not motorcycles, but they're like motorcycles, and they have two wheels in the front and then one in the back, and two people can be in it. Mm-hmm. Because it's like being on a motorcycle and, and a car at the same time. Oh, and I think I've seen those. Yeah, our, my friend from El Paso, Isela, and Jason Reyes uh, from uh, the let's say, Writing for Boobs, writing for boobs mm-hmm. uh, rally where they raise money for breast cancer awareness in October. Uh, you know, I follow them on social media, and they have one in him, and, and, and they're both having, as a couple, are having a blast in those things. You know, they're yeah. riding it throughout those country roads and stuff. And I was like, man, I'd like to invest in one of those, you know, because, you know, you can always get a jet ski and stuff like that. But I mean, how, how often do we go to the island, you know, to do that? You know, we work a lot. Right. Yes. So I'm like, man, I would like to buy one of those. So, you know, rally. We used to ride a lot, rally. What happened? I, I mean, don't know. 
I mean, we used to go all over the state of Texas on that Road King I used to have, and now I have that. And by the way, I'm almost done paying off that uh, that Street Glide I got, that Harley Davidson Street Glide. I'm like $800 away from paying it off. Yeah. We need to start riding again, and I really want to go to Galveston this uh, year uh, and go well, check. Well, if it's happening, the Lone Star the, the Rally. Lone Star is, Rally. Yeah, it's by one of the my. Strand. It's one of my favorite, and then I want to go to the one in Bandera as well because we've performed there before, and I just want to go as, you know, a patron, as a writer. That was probably the first ever uh, rally we ever went to when I bought a motorcycle back in 2006 mm -hmm. was in Bandera. Yeah. You yeah, know, and we was. and then we ended up playing it with Whiskey D, and then we had one of the biggest crowds ever. It was record-breaking, and yes, it was. everybody it was, was awesome. like, we've been coming here for like 16 years. This is the best one ever. Uh, so, uh, Bill and I think Tabor. Going back, going back to your question, um, you asked, you asked, why don't we write anymore? Well, I think since you put the band together back in 2011 ish, I think yeah. we've been extremely busy with that. Mm -hmm. And so, aside from both of us having full time jobs, yeah. we have all these other side projects that we really commit our life and our heart to and our passion to. Yeah. So, um, I mean, it's it's. It's in the garage. It's but we need to get on that bike, yeah, we do. and we need we to do. we need to take I mean, a microphone and take it, and then just yeah, take then, the fans then, with us, and and um and hook up the little GoPro on there. Yeah, you know, somebody a couple of weeks ago, somebody had mentioned on on um on the comment that you never you never said the story about Camp Wood, mm -hmm. and so I said that I would remind you. So whenever, but okay. just so so. Well, you, maybe tomorrow night. Yeah, tomorrow night say. we can do it tomorrow night. Uh, by the way, um, uh, one of the guys there. Uh, let me see here. JC El Jefe Vasquez says, Rock, buy Rally a ring and a generator. Well, buddy, all she needs is a generator right now. <laughs> because show show him that bling, baby. Show oh, him that bling. Uh, yeah, show him that. I mean, I, she, I got a rock on her finger, buddy. You know what I'm saying? It's huge. So look at that. Uh, it, it, oh, yeah. my gosh. I don't know. And I'm only, I'm only like 100 payments from finishing oh paying it God. off. You know what I'm saying? So. Terrible. <laughs> No, you are not. I had it on layaway for two years. <laughs> Finally. Uh, I'm just kidding. No, yeah. no, no. So, um, yeah, but uh, we definitely got to go to the Lone Star Rally this year. Mm -hmm. And if Bandera happens in October, that's always a fun one as well. And the weather's great. And uh, the hill country is just a beautiful place and to we ride. And we do, we actually, technically, we do go to all these motorcycle rallies, but... We, we go and we work it. Like, yeah. Yeah. You guys, they hire the band. So we go yeah. out and so we end up working. I mean, we still have a great time, mm. but uh, we don't ride. I don't out. know what those uh, those motorcycles with two wheels in the front and the back and it's a two seater where you sit next to each other. I, I don't, don't know, know what they're called. Uh, maybe somebody knows that can tell me. But uh, not, not not those Can Am ones. I'm not definitely. Those. Those I really would. Else. Yeah, I'd really like to. Yeah, because a Can Am one is like riding a motorcycle. Yeah, yeah, yeah. This is like sitting in in in, in a bike in yeah. a in a car. All right. So question number three: Is there a show you used to watch as a kid that you would love to see come back? Okay. Yes. <laughs> Which one, fish? Boy meets world. Boy meets world oh, with the yeah. panga. With Topanga, and yeah. Corey Matthews, yeah, and Sean. I love Sean. Yeah, you really love that. Sean is a uh, is the the other kid that the, the friend or, or was he the, the? Yeah, he's Corey's best friend. Okay, yeah. Corey's a little kid with the the curly black hair. Yeah, and the other Ooh. kid, yeah, the other kid was the sandy brown hair to the side, right, wavy. Uh, his brother. He had a brother. Oh. Um, oh my God, what was his brother's name? I forgot his brother's name. But um, yeah, that's for sure the show that I would I would watch is Boy Meets World. I loved that show when I was younger. Yeah, yeah. And it was really cool because they started they started the show as little kids, and then as I got older, they got older, and it was like watching them. And they were they were in junior high, and then they were in high school, and then they had um, a final episode when they're telling Mr. Feeney, their teacher. Um, that you know they were going, I guess, going to college already, and it, it was the last episode, and it was it was like oh, like you get a nod in your throat because it was like you had seen them grow throughout the show, yeah. and then and then you see them leave, and it's like it's the end. It's like what? With but Mr. That was definitely a show. Especially the scene with Mr. Feeney, right? I mean, that was kind of like yeah, where he's sitting on the desk at the end, and yeah. then they, the classroom is empty, and he he has he like wants to cry, and he's like class dismissed. Yeah, it's you, like oh my god. Yeah, I, I want to <laughs> yeah. cry right now just thinking of it. Oh my god. Yeah, thinking of you watching the show when you were little. Yeah, yeah that's <laughs> awesome. What about you, Ral? What uh, TV show? Uh, that you used to watch as a kid, would you love to see come back? 
Well, a lot of the a lot of the shows like that I used to watch are like um, Sesame Street, Mr. Rogers Neighborhood. All of those are still on. All the education ones, right? All yes. the education. <laughs> Well, you know what? It's because nerd we, alert, never, nerd we alert. never had cable. Like we couldn't afford cable, so we watched PBS Channel sixty. So uh-huh. those are the only things. But when I would go to my grandmother's house, my grandma Lupita, um, we I would watch a show called David the Gnome. They're uh-huh. like little gnomes, and it was him and his what? wife. That's it so was cool. yeah, him and his wife. Um, he was like i don't know 399 years old and he was a doctor Mm -hmm. and he would he would heal his patients he would heal his patients and i think because of that show i um i mean i have a love of you know of animals because of it i'm i i I think because he would heal all of his patients who were usually animals like it they had talking birds yeah fish that would sing and even their little uh, the little song that comes on, like they're, you know, uh, when it starts, it says, it says like lizards, fish that can sing and some mm-hmm. other stuff. But what, what I really liked also was that his wife backed him up in everything. She thought he was crazy at times, yeah. but his wife backed him up all the time. And she always had like this spread, like a buffet yeah. type of, um, you know, spread on, on, on the table after, you know, when he would come home and yeah. he would have dinner, she had dinner and for she him. would always be by his side, feeding him and like yeah. encouraging him. It was, it was really, really sweet. Well, I now him. I know where you get it. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> hey, uh, and but, you, <laughs> well, by the way, no, I, I was, you were showing me a clip of that gnome yeah. show. I had never seen it and you showed yes. me a clip and I saw the, the credits and I saw Tom Bosley and I was like, Hey, that's yeah. the voice of, uh, that's the, the Mr. Cunningham on happy days. Yeah. So he's the voice of the main he's, gnome. Yeah. He's the voice of David, the gnome, yeah. uh-huh, the main character, the doctor who's 399 years And was, old. was really surprising and actually surprised rally as well was it was produced by Harvey Weinstein. Productions. Oh, productions. Wow. Yeah. Yes, his, his production like, company. Oh my God. It's oh Harvey Weinstein Productions. <laughs> <laughs> Damn. Oh my gosh. Uh, so Tino, man, he kind of like got uh, my answer. He's on the on the on the chat. Well, Tino saying Incredible Hulk. Uh-huh. Um, let me see. Uh, Victor Ch- Martinez says MTV before all the reality TV. Oh yeah, like when TRL was on. That yes, was awesome. total request. Yeah. Uh, yes. D Kings, the Fall Guy, uh, La Menina, Murder She Wrote. Uh, Sally signs everywhere. La Carabina de Ambrosio, or what? What the hell is what that? Is that? Sally? <laughs> La Carabina de Ambrosio, de Ambrosio. I have no idea what that is. <laughs> Brian, leave it to Beaver. Uh, Noe Garza, Urkel. All right. Family matters. Family, Family matters. matters. The Fall yeah. Guy that was with uh, our good friend over here, Steve Majors mm-hmm. or Lee Majors. Yeah. Uh, and Six Million Dollar Man, Columbo, Gilligan's Island, man, so many good ones. But uh, Tino said uh, one that I was thinking of saying is uh, Welcome Back, Cotter. Uh, that was one of my favorite shows with those sweat hogs. And, uh, but school was so different back then compared to the Boy Meets World days. Mm-hmm. Welcome Back, Cotter. Welcome Back, Cotter was actually like Boy Meets World. Uh, what was that other one with uh, Zach and all? What was the name of that? Oh, Saved um, by the Bell. Saved by the Bell. Yeah. Saved by the Bell. Yeah, you had your, uh, you had your principal. You had your, your students. And the students were a bunch of delinquents. You had Arnold Horshack. You had uh, Vinnie Barbarino, who's John Travolta, uh, Washington, and, and uh, Juan Epstein, who uh, would always be late for class. And he'd give the uh, a note to the teacher, right? And he would read the note. Uh, Please excuse uh, Epstein for being late for, you know, this morning and all this with the excuse. And at the end, signed Epstein's mother. And instead of <laughs> instead of putting the name right, yes, signed yeah. Epstein's mother. And he'd look like his face would look like, Ding, God, he wrote it, right? Yeah. So I was like, man, that was me in school, man. <laughs> so I think uh, for me, Welcome Back, Cotter definitely has to be the one, man. So Somebody says Johnny Canal is on the chat box. Yeah, and Aki Rogelio. Yeah. By the way, Aki Rogelio has a, a, a channel, a YouTube channel, a YouTube channel that YouTube, I follow. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And uh, I always get uh, noticed every time, uh, notified every time he uploads something. Mm-hmm. And uh, he's got a lot of cool stuff, man. I was going through some of his history uh, in the library of uh, performances, and there were some uh, Tejano artists that, you know, those one-hit wonder guys, and you never see them again. And there was a certain time that I used to hang out with them, like, I wonder whatever happened to those guys, you know, mm-hmm. they're still around. Yeah. Uh, so um, Raymond Rose, uh, Good Times, Thelma on Good Times, and J- Johnny uh, J.J. Walker, Dynamite! <laughs> 
what? Uh, and uh, let's see, uh, Tejano Country on Saturday nights. Yep, I remember that. Puro Tejano, the show I was with too, bro. What about that one? Uh, so Dallas as well, Gunsmoke, Screech MacGyver. So Screech, Screech was Family Matters, right? Yeah. yeah. No, Screech was uh, Saved, Saved by, by the, the Bell. Bell. Oh, that's right. Yeah, Screech. Oh, yeah. He, he was, yeah, a, was Urkel. Yes, he okay. actually came down and did a stand-up comedy show here. Wow. Yeah. Cool. By the way, speaking of, uh, you know, these TV shows in Los Angeles and stuff like that, tomorrow on Tuesday Night Show, we're going to have an interview with uh, J.D. Mata, who was originally from the Rio Grande Valley, but he moved to Los Angeles and he's been an actor ever since and musician as well. Mm -hmm. So we'll be talking to him on the show as well. And uh, that's it for our hashtag PBT. Three questions for the fans. Yeah. yeah. Felicia, thank you so much, sweetie. And you get some uh, rest and relaxation. And uh, maybe we'll call you tomorrow, okay? All right. Sounds good, And then we'll see you next Thanks. Tuesday, hopefully, after this uh, shelter in place thing is over. Hopefully, yeah. We should be done with shelter in place, God willing, by, by Sunday, next Sunday. So I'll be back over there with you guys. Okay, mama. All righty. Love you. All right. Bye. 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 Love you guys. Bye-bye. Bye. All right. That was fun. Be sure to join our Patreon club. A $25 pledge gets you a special hashtag PVT t-shirt and sticker, and you have the chance of winning in our PVT weekly drawing for prizes. And what you got to do is go to the Patreon and uh, search Rock and Roll James PVT. Okay? Mm -hmm. uh, we've got uh, some new members. Vanessa Trevino from Brownsville, Texas. Mark Anthony from Bastrop, Texas, over there. I can love this. Austin, Texas. He's on the chat box right now. <laughs> and uh, also Gene Benavides from Twin Falls, Idaho. Man, that dude's way the hell up there yes. in Idaho. Yes. And uh, also we want to thank our other new members, uh, mm -hmm. Junior Salinas from Mission, Texas, just here locally, five minutes away from us. Uh, Felipe Menchaca. From who's, Round Rock, who's Texas. Who's also on the chat box See? right now? That's yes, cool. thank you, Felipe. Uh, Felipe Menchaca is Round Rock, and that's uh, there's a place in Round Rock that has like huge donuts or huge cinnamon rolls. Oh, I've seen that. Yeah, I'd like to go check yeah, that place yeah, yeah. one day. Uh, also, uh, Emilio Garcia Jr. in Gilbert, Arizona. All right, yes. he's an educator, and he's originally from Mercedes, and he found the channel, and he it says it makes him feel like he's back home. Mm -hmm. So thank you so much. And if you want to be a part of it, just a $25 pledge gets you that shirt. And there's different tiers and you can be part of it. Also, Cash App, we have dollar sign Rock and Roll James. Uh, for, uh, we want to thank Gilbert Zamora, who donated 20 bucks last week, and Araceli Carrillo and her husband, Jose, Jose Carrillo. from Florida. They each uh, donated twenty five dollars. They really enjoy the show, and we appreciate. Thank you. Uh, and and uh, we uh, really thank them for appreciating our show as well and our hard work as well. Mm -hmm. And Venmo at Rock and Roll James. Okay, so you can do that. So that's going to do it, ladies and gentlemen, for us. So we hope you enjoyed the show. Make sure to share, like, subscribe, and tell everybody that this is a network that has all kinds of entertainment. And we touch all kinds of subjects and play music. Even jazz. It was nice having this jazz behind us, no? Yes, we usually I have a it. polka and stuff. Mm -hmm. So it's hashtag PBT Saturday Night Party Live from the My PBT Network Studios special Monday night edition post Hurricane Hannah. And it was brought to you by Dr. T's Primary Care for Men and the law offices. Of Rene A. Flores. Thank you to them. And we'll see you tomorrow night, six o'clock. I'll be doing the mix. And then after six, about 8 30, we'll be doing Tuesday Night Live, your regularly scheduled programming right here on hashtag PVT. Yeah.